Hey there Shredders, my name is Austin and I'm here today to talk to you about the brand new Schecter Guitars AM7 Aaron Marshall Signature 7 String. Now this guitar and the 6 string version were announced in late 2021 to a lot of excitement, but there was a lot of development that went into this. I didn't get to place my pre-order until September of 2022, and I didn't receive the guitar until December of 2022. Now there's been a lot of demand, a lot of hype. I believe there may be a back order on these, so make sure to call a retailer of your choice and get on the list as soon as possible so you can get this in your hands quickly. Personally, I ordered mine through Drum City Guitar Land based out of Wheat Ridge, Colorado. It's the second guitar I purchased through them and I can't recommend them enough. They made everything very easy. They gave me a free setup, free shipping. They also gave me free picks, strings, a really cool Schecter Guitars Drum City Guitar Land shirt, and they even gave me a cool sticker collection. And again, they just made the whole process very easy. Now, if you're not familiar with Intervals, the sole member is Aaron Marshall. They're a Canadian progressive metal band, lots of great rhythm, awesome beats, great melodies, and a lot of artistic integrity. It really shines through Aaron Marshall's guitar playing and his tone and his instruments have always been a focal point. When I became a fan, he was actually endorsing Sir Guitars. Then he went to Mayonis, I believe back in 2020. And then now he's moved to Schecter and he's really had an opportunity to make a signature instrument that is truly his own at a great price point for uh, your common average buyer. This guitar comes to us today priced at $1,449 US dollars, which kind of places it in the middle range of guitars on the market today, so let's talk about what you get for the money. It comes with a cobalt slate color, which is a baby blue metallic color with maybe just a hint of turquoise in there. It's hard to get the true color to show on camera. It still looks amazing on camera, but just wait until you see this thing in person. It is beautiful. Now, the shape of the guitar is actually comparable to a standard Schecter shape that's been around for a while. I believe they call it the C shape. I own a C1 Plus, and it's the exact same shape. This one just has better contours and is actually a little bit thinner, uh, which helps with the weight and I think just the overall comfort of the instrument. This comes with chrome hip shot hardware, which a lot of people will pay to upgrade their guitar. You're getting it here stock. You're getting grip lock tuners, hip shot bridge and their o-ring knobs it's all very premium and feels and looks great you're getting a macassar ebony fretboard which is a simple and functional piece of ebony it looks great works great does exactly what you need it to do it comes with a bolt-on quarter sawn winge neck and this neck is fantastic frankly I, I love the smooth feel. Wingay has gained a lot of popularity, and I think that's for good reason. To increase the comfort and the quality, it has a volute on it and an all-access heel. Just really puts it a cut above the rest, in my opinion. It comes with aluminum offset reverse circle inlays. These look great. They're very unique compared to what's on the market today. You can see them up close. They look great in photos, uh, but they're not too in your face. It's more of a low profile look. Also comes with super blue lumen lay side dots, which easily help you with stage lighting. Uh, whenever it's dark on stage, these will glow bright in the dark and you'll be able to keep telling where you are. You don't get lost. It's a 26 and a half inch scale, which is also great for the low tunings on that seven string. Uh, the, the seventh string is often problematic. It can get floppy if you don't have a thick string. So that longer scale length really helps in that regard. It also has a very comfortable thin C profile on the neck. It's about 20 millimeters at the first fret and about 22 millimeters thick at the 12th fret, has a nut width of about 48 millimeters. Now it also has a 16 inch fretboard radius, very comfortable to play down from the bottom all the way to the top, no complaints there. It has a Graftec XL black tusk nut and it also has a spoke wheel truss adjustment. Uh, this is a great feature to have on your guitar. You're not having to remove some cover on the headstock. You're not having to take the neck off. The wheel is there. You can access it at any time. Very easy, very simple, very functional. A part I really want to emphasize here are the pickups on this instrument, which are amazing. They are Schecter's brand new USA made Equinox neck pickup and Solstice bridge pickup. This is Aaron Marshall's new signature set through Schecter. Now, Schecter is keeping the exact details of these pickups a bit close to their chest at the time. 
they're going to be releasing USA models later on, and I believe we'll hear more about the pickups at that time. I still wanted to know a bit more because I found them to be amazing. So I reached out to Aaron Marshall, and he was kind enough to reply to me and tell me a little bit of insider info uh, without revealing too much since they're, of course, keeping it a secret. But what he was able to tell me is that the bridge is Alnico 4 and the neck is Alnico 5. I assumed they were both Alnico 5. Uh, the 4 is a unique touch. Uh, the bridge is very aggressive. Uh, these, in my opinion, are my ideal modern 7-string pickups. They aren't the most versatile set I've played in terms of playing country, blues, rock, classic rock, metal, but I will say it's one of the most versatile sets I've played within the realms of metal. The cleans are amazing. The distorted tones are amazing. There's great clarity, and I think they'll sound great in the mix. Per Aaron, these might eventually be sold separately, and I think this would be a compelling option for anyone to put in their guitars, Schecter, or any other brand. As we approach the end of this spec list, let's talk about the strings. It came from the factory fitted with Ernie Ball 9 through 62 strings. Now, I immediately take off factory strings. They always feel grimy to me. So I replaced them with string joy strings of the exact same gauge. Uh, string joy is a company based out of Tennessee. I was very happy with my purchase with them. So I'll give them a little bit of a shout out too. Uh, personally, I believe the B string needs to be a little bit thicker. I used 9 through 62s on my 27 inch scale instrument and I thought it was fantastic in standard tuning, but I think I need to go up to maybe a 64, just a little bit thicker on that low seven to uh, avoid any floppiness and help with the tuning stability on this instrument. So just something to keep in mind if you're gonna play in standard tuning. Of course, if you go much lower than that, I would definitely recommend that you step up and gauge. And finally, let's talk about the selector switch. It's just a simple five-way selector switch, but it has a chrome knob on it, which is just really cool. It just helps the whole guitar be cohesive and it's aesthetic. And it comes with a single volume and single tone pot. Nice and simple. Personally, it's all I could ever need. And frankly, I don't even really need a tone pot. Okay, now that we've covered the specs, let's talk about the good on this instrument. And there's a lot to talk about. So this has premium features typically found on more expensive non-import guitars. I touched on this a bit already, but I cannot emphasize enough what a huge perk of buying this instrument that that is. It saves you a lot of work and headaches in the future because you've already got the top of the line hardware. It also has fantastic high output pickups that really shine when playing modern metal and progressive music. I really enjoyed them. Uh, I'm gonna keep them in this guitar forever. They're never going. Uh, the Wingate neck feels incredible. It pairs well with the ebony fretboard and it has a fast, stable feel. One of the biggest strengths of this guitar is its beautiful, simple, clean finish. Everything works together cohesively on this instrument and the aesthetic is just incredibly beautiful in my opinion. I don't think you need to have overly complex guitar to have a good looking guitar. Uh, the stainless steel jumbo frets are done properly with no obvious tooling marks and it also has a lighter weight body with great ergonomics. It makes the guitar very comfortable to play. Normally I prefer a forearm contour, this one doesn't have it, but on this instrument honestly I didn't notice that I was lacking that. I was very comfortable anyways. Now that we've covered all of the good, we need to talk about a few bad things as a part of this review. Personally, I've had some issues with tuning stability. Now, this can be partially explained by the crazy swings and temperature and humidity Kansas has had recently. Now, I keep the house at one set temperature, but the heat might run more during certain times when the temperatures are, I don't know, in the middle of a brutal snowstorm like we had a couple weeks back that had sub-zero temperatures. Or today, we have more moderate temperatures with high humidity. So there's been a lot of fluctuation. I recommend that you have a humidifier or a dehumidifier in your basement no matter what, just to make sure that you're keeping a somewhat even environment for your guitars. Just something to mention, every time I pick it up, I have to tune it just slightly to get it to be ready to be played. My Ibanez AZ is perfect. Um, you know, nine times out of 10, I pick it up and I don't even need to tune it, which is just absolutely crazy. I don't expect that from this instrument, but it's just something to note. Again, it's not problematic in any way. In fact, this guitar holds tuning better than a lot of my guitars, just not as good as the Ibanez AZ that I have behind me. Another weird thing about this guitar is that the hex keys that were provided, 
don't actually work to adjust the bridge saddles. I had to use my own. Now I recommend everybody has a set of standard and metric hex keys on them at all times, just in case something like this happens. But I think Schecter should fix that in the future and make sure to include the proper size with the guitar. Another thing is that the adjustment tool for the spoke wheel truss rod adjuster, uh, it's not the correct diameter. So you go to insert the tool and it actually doesn't fit. So I think that's something else that Schecter should address in the future. Uh, the nut on the guitar can be a bit problematic. It needs to just be filed a little bit more. It's not bad. It just needs to be well lubricated. Make sure to put lubricant on it, whether it be graphite or some type of lube um, to adequately prepare the guitar for use. Uh, sometimes I have to pull on the strings to make sure that they uh, adjust when I tune down or tune up. So it's just something to keep in mind. Now, there are some minor imperfections in the finish as well. Uh, it's nothing too material and it's completely par for the course for an import guitar. I do not expect this guitar to be on par with uh, non-import higher priced instruments. I just don't. So don't expect perfection here. It's still a fantastic looking instrument. Now that we've covered the good and the bad, let's discuss my scoring matrix. So the first metric I have is quality. I'm going to give this guitar an eight out of 10. I think that the quality is excellent for an import guitar, but there are some areas for improvement. The nut isn't quite filed properly, and there are a few rough fret edges and imperfections, but there's nothing egregious, so I feel like an 8 out of 10 is the proper rating here. Now my next metric is going to be features. I'm going to give this guitar a 9 out of 10. This guitar almost has it all. It has premium hardware, one of the best necks I've ever felt, strong pickups, stainless steel frets. If it had more options for pickup selector switches, such as what you can find on the Ibanez AZ there, I would give it a 10 easily. But you have to also consider this is Aaron's signature instrument. So these are his settings that he uses personally. So I can't really knock it too bad for not having more selector switch options. My next metric is value. I'm going to give this guitar an 8 out of 10. Schecter makes incredible import instruments, but like all guitars, prices have gone up recently. This makes selecting your instrument carefully more important than ever, so your hard-earned dollars, or insert currency of choice here, are used wisely. This guitar is a great value, and your dollars are being well spent. That being said, $1449 US dollars is still a considerable investment that closes in on Kiesel Guitars territory. Uh, what would really help the value here, in my opinion, is the inclusion of a guitar case with your purchase, which is something I've long believed would benefit Schecter guitars. This metric is going to be the first 10 out of 10, and that is for aesthetics. While aesthetics are completely subjective, I find this guitar to be stunning. The cobalt slate and arctic jade finishes available on Aaron Marshall's new guitars are simple and clean compared to many of the finishes available on the market, but I think that simplicity is its biggest strength. The color shows the body lines very well, and the color looks even better in person than it does in photographs or video. Uh, the lighter color also pairs extremely well with the darkness of the fretboard and the neck. Uh, great body shape, reverse headstock design, and chrome accents really draw everything together. I appreciate that Schecter even emphasized smaller details such as the aluminum circle inlays. Uh, this truly sets it apart from any of the competitors in my opinion. The final metric today is playability, and let me tell you, this was the easiest to decide. It's a 10 out of 10. Drum City Guitarland did a great job with the initial setup. I had to do a few tweaks just to get it to my exact spec, but the body is lightweight, the contours are very comfortable. This guitar isn't cumbersome in any way, and it's very balanced. So it will do great for studio play and live play. The neck is fast, comfortable, and thin, and the hip shot hardware feels very premium and great to the touch. Again, I can't emphasize it enough, 10 out of 10 for playability. Now that we've covered the scoring matrix, we're going to move on to the playing test. Now I'm going to be taking the guitar for a run and I'm going to show each of its toggle switch settings through a few of my favorite amps on my Neural DSP Quad Cortex. And we'll be running that through Reaper today for the recording. <laughs>
brings our final score to 45 out of 50, earning this guitar an excellent rating. Overall, this is a strong offering from Schechter Guitars, and I'm thrilled to see Aaron Marshall get a signature model that he can truly call his own at a price point that a larger pool of buyers can find attainable. I'm looking forward to the release of the USA Guitars, but if Keith Marrow is any indicator, they're going to be excellent. It's also important to remember that signature guitars directly benefit the artists that stand behind them. It's more than just an instrument purchase at the end of the day. Aaron Marshall messaged me to thank me when I purchased the guitar. I don't know how common this is when you purchase a signature instrument, but it just goes to show you what this means to him and that he'll go above and beyond what is necessary to make you feel welcome for buying his guitar. It's a definite benefit in my opinion. The guitar is not perfect. It has some room for improvement in the quality and value areas, but overall is a very compelling option in this guitar market, which is just rife with competition. Until next time, I'm out. Have a good one.